So any stand-up memories for Parramatta that, you know, in the, all those years that you've been associated? So we just talked about the well, satisfaction of the, 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 the juniors coming through and you know, yeah. the three premierships in there. And, well, and, uh, going back before that, there was a fellow well-known throughout rugby, an ex-Waratah, a big noise, but a wonderful bloke, and his name was Brian Palmer. Uh, Brian always had a lot to say, but he was a wonderful coach. Coach, he coached para, he coached the, the Wallabies when he was close to seventy years of age. Uh, he's passed away now, of course, but uh, a, a great black. Uh, uh, I heard his son's middle name was Rugby. Uh, Brian Rugby Palmer. That's right. Yes, but he was one of the. Uh, it was an it was outstanding identity. Let's put it that way in the club in those days. Well, that led into the next question. So, is there a coach? Is he your favourite coach that coached you, or you know, made a difference to you, your life, or is it? You know, well, Palmer, Palmer, in, in, he was he was he would rank as the best coach I had had been the pleasure of being in the team under him. Yeah, yeah he, he was quite good. He he was a. He was a 1927 Waratah, lived for football, lived for football, uh, and uh, suffered no nonsense. Certainly had a loud bellow. You could hear him from here to Winnet Station, but a good man. I guess now moving to the professional game and having played in the Bledisloe Cup against um, New Zealand and that, um, what do you think about professionalism and how do we ever going to beat the Kiwis? <laughs> or is that a dirt? Is that, there's, there's an acronym in there that's too. <laughs> there's, there's a lot to say about that. First of all, about, about professionalism. Professionalism was something that had to come because the Australian or World Rugby Union was advancing and demanding so much of play. That much that they couldn't afford to possibly keep up with the program that the home unions or the rugby world circles could do, uh, and uh, the, it would come to a stage where if the game didn't go professional, the fellas would have to give it away and say, "Well, I, I can't put up with the program. Who's going to pay me? How am I going to live? I can't live my life alone on rugby alone." So. Professional football had to come, and now, or, or put it this way, in the olden days, we would average about three test matches a year. We would see England come over to Australia once every 10, maybe 20 years. We would see uh, the, the, the uh, Springboks used to come up over to Australia play a series of games in Australia before going on to the main, uh, their main part of the tour, which is New Zealand. So uh, there wasn't a great deal of, of, of international rugby played. Now, uh, immediately it went uh, professional, money came into it. But now we have, we have uh, uh, at least 15 international test matches played every year. We, did, we had nothing like the, the uh, what's, what's the, what's the uh, Super 12s or start off as Super 16s, whatever it is. There was none of that. There was no hopping over to England to play a test match against Wales and England and then coming back and being back within a fortnight. The thing that's made the big difference to international football, of course, is the aeroplane, air travel. Mm. You can get teams of the other side of the world to play with them a few days and be back home again to play with their club next Saturday. The, the, the wooden couldn't possibly have been a, a Rugby World Cup and look what that has grown into. And really air travel has got a lot to do with it because mm -hmm. they can shift their players anywhere in the world in a very short time. So, so what do we need to do now to beat New Zealand? Is We've been trying to answer that question for at least 50 years or more. 
I don't think we've got enough mongrel, but that's my it's only well, personal. Yeah, I've never seen a bad New Zealand team. We can say that. Obviously, other teams are some better teams than others, but I've never seen a bad New Zealand. You think it's their culture? Is it you know, because it's one nation, one team type thing? Or well, it's in their blood. It's, I mean, uh, it's like winning a war, uh, winning the Bledisloe Cup, and there's never ever, ever any thought in a New Zealand's mind that they're going to lose it. And this is a big thing. You know. it, it, it's almost as if it's shameful to lose to lose a, an international game. And they've lost a few. I've, I've never faced up against the Harker. Is the Harker, how do you feel when you're eyeballing? I thought that, oh, no, they, they should ban that. That is, now that's, that's terrible. To, to make the opposition face you with their bloody eyes hanging out and their tongues out out there, and it's it's a definite advantage, and I think it should be it should, should be shut out. Now there's many that will say, well, it's just entertainment, but uh, not to the it's it's they're they're building up their what's it, what is it they're building up their their, their attitude all the time, they're, and uh, you can't deny the fact. That, uh, that that is the case because there, by the time the ball is kicked off, these blacks have worked themselves up, yeah, into this. Yeah. and and that they never take a time to warm up. They say, "Oh, it's only warm yeah, up really, time. Yeah, First really. ten minutes, just warm up." No, not so with the All Blacks. The All Blacks did that warming up with the Harker, yeah, and they yeah, say, sure. "Give them ten minutes of really top." They've got the go impression get they're up and go. ready to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, Parramatta, the modern Parramatta, where do you think we're going with that? Yeah, I mean, we've seen improvements in the last two or three years, but we've got a lot to do, so have your feelings about that yeah. as being patron? Well, I'm very proud to be patron, first of all. About my time with Parramatta goes back nearly seven, is it, I think it's over 70 years. Uh, it's a hard one because the face of rugby in the in that this Western area particularly is changing. Uh, we've seen more changes and it's caused by the movement of population. I don't, and quite frankly, it, it, it's going to depend a, a, a lot on good management. I think that we, if we don't, if we can't get the, the good management, solid management behind ourselves, no matter how good your players are, your club won't be strong. So, uh, in the foundation, to me, of a rugby club is not the good players. It's a good administration, and that is so in quite a lot of other mm -hmm. situations involving clubs of all type. What's it? And so we, we've got a lot to do there, and, and I think we've got a lot to do player-wise. Uh, our, our present group of players, I, I believe, have uh, quite, a, quite good, good uh, ability, and their potential is quite good. They're there, but we've got to harness that potential that they have, and we've got, we've got to get the, the discipline moving. Uh, it was proved in in the last two years that I've been along to see Parramatta matches that the willingness is there and the ability is there but the discipline falls away quite remarkably and and I think that the first thing our coach should be aware of is the fact that discipline is something which must be treated very seriously. Mm -hmm. Now I guess we're coming to the end but um, a person who's been, you know, very strong in our club as a young person with the Tafu Pilata now, and I know yes. you've been tied up with our club for you know, yeah, yes, almost yes. your life. <laughs> well, what what do you think about Taf and and uh, his philosophy? Well, I think Taf's a wonderful black. I really, I'm not. He, he may listen to this. I don't know, but whether he listens or not doesn't make any difference. He he's a, he's a, he's a great advertisement for our club. And I can only hope that, that his enthusiasm and, and 
the influence he has over players will continue on because I think at the present moment that we depend upon Tafu to set a good example. He is doing so and uh, we want a few more Tafus around. Uh, they wouldn't go astray at all in our club at the present time. Okay, Eric, in closing, you've led a great life and, and you are one of the, the, the true um, gentlemen of, 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 of rugby. And uh, is there any secrets you want to share with us? As uh, I know you're aiming for 100 because fewer people live past 100, but um, uh, is there anything that you could impart to us or would like to say? Or no, that's, a, that's the hardest question to ask me all day. <laughs> no, I think the good Lord gives us all a good life and if we look after our lives as, he's, as we've been given it, we'll, we, sh we should be very happy. And uh, it's, it's up to ourselves what we do with our lives. Uh, we, 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 we can't throw the, uh, the, the blame onto someone else if we're if we're miserable, if we're, if we're not enjoying life, that's our own fault. But uh, yeah. I, I think that's a fair enough answer as I can give you at the moment. Well, that's anyway, a but question a lot will answer itself, isn't it? But what about what advice would you give to a young player starting out like you, with the 15 years of age and the journey it's taking you, and and weird through your rugby is weary through the whole of your life? Well, he won't go through it because there'll never be another period like I have, but. No, I, I, I admire the kids who can play sport, no matter what sport it is, play it cleanly, don't put it, have any smudges on your reputation, don't cause it to be that way, because once you delve into the improper things of sport, you will lose all the satisfaction uh, that you would gain otherwise. Okay, Eric, I'd like to thank you very, very much for spending all that time with us. Yes, we've had a pretty fair bash, haven't we? We've done well. It's been really